Okay, in this final section on BGP operations in section two of this BGP course, uh, we're going to talk about next hops. This is going to be pretty short because we've already talked a little bit about next hops in terms of multi hop and being able to go through a device that is uh, doing filtering or something like that, a middle box, and load sharing via multi hop. So let's talk about some of the other cases where next hop might be interesting in BGP. The first thing to note is that next hop is different between eBGP and iBGP. If I have this 100 colon colon slash 64 route being advertised from A to B and to C, what will B and C learn as the next hop towards this destination? This would be an iBGP route, so I would not change the next hop step at any BGP speaker. So if there's another BGP speaker here in the middle between A and C, and A is 65001, I would find that C's next hop would be A, the originator, rather than the intermediate next hop in here. This is important because we go back to the concept of synchronization, which we talked about very early on in this BGP course. Um, synchronization is this concept that the IGP and BGP tables need to be synchronized in order to make BGP work. And it's because of this next hop situation. Now, when B advertises the route to D and C advertises the route to D, they are in different autonomous systems. In this case, D will change the next hop towards the nearest eBGP speaker that they learned the route from. So in this case, D will change the next hop to either B or C, just depending on which path is best. When D advertises to E and F, however, these are all in the same autonomous system. So once again, because these are iBGP, uh, peering sessions, I will not change the next hop as I'm transiting through the autonomous system. That means I need to have edge-to-edge -edge reachability from D, E to D, no matter what's in this cloud or within this autonomous system. And once again, F to G, I will change the next hop because this is an EBGP session. Now let's talk about multi-access links, which are quite interesting in BGP. So say that 100 colon slash 64 is being advertised by A to B and to C, and B and C are both advertising this route to D. Now what is interesting here is that this is a multi-access link here in the middle. This is an Ethernet or something similar. Now in this case, what could happen is that B could advertise 100 colon colon slash 64 2D with a next top of C because they are on the same multi-access link. This is a perfectly valid configuration within BGP. So it is possible for a BGP speaker to advertise a next top other than itself as the next top towards a destination. Now this is used in other situations other than multi-access networks, but we won't spend a lot of time working through those situations. Now let's talk about route reflectors. Let's say that A, B, and C are in one AS, say AS65000, and D is in AS65001. So D is advertising 100 colon colon slash 64 to A through an eBGP connection. So this is eBGP right here. When A receives this route, let's say that it has a route reflector B, which it is sending its routes to, which is going to reflect those routes to C. What is the next hop in this situation? C will retain the next hop of D because this is iBGP. This means that C needs to have reachability to D, even though D is outside of its autonomous system. Now there is one way to solve this, which is that if you don't want to carry this link between A and D in your IGP, so that C knows how to reach it, what you can do is on A, you can set next top self. This allows the router, the BGP speaker, to set for A for to set the next hop to itself. So C not only needs reachability to A at this point. Now next hop self works beyond situations with route reflectors, but it's quite handy in the case of route reflectors, which is why I describe it in the route reflection case. Now another thing to remember is that next hop self, again, if this is two different ASs, can be used on B. This makes the route reflector be what's called in line. So now when C receives the route, the next top will be towards B. So you can actually set next top self on a route reflector and cause the routing path to go through the route reflector. You normally wouldn't do this because if the route reflector is serving a lot of clients, it's going to be carrying a ton of traffic in the network.
Now, another interesting situation is a route server. Now, let's say that A and D are in one AS, and 100 colon colon slash 64 is being advertised via IBGP to A, or even by IS to IS or some IGP. B is in a separate AS, and C is in a separate AS. So let's call this 65,000. Let's call this 65,001, and let's call this 65,002. So in this case, A is going to advertise the route up to B, which is going to set the next stop to A, and then B is going to advertise the route down to C, which is going to set the next stop to B. Now, if this happens to be an IXP fabric, an Internet Exchange Point, or an IX, fabric, you don't want this next stop changing to take place. So if B is a route server rather than a route reflector, what will happen is, is that when A sends the route to B, B, even though it's in a different autonomous system, will preserve the next stop and send C the route with the next stop pointing to A. This, of course, means that there must be some connectivity between C and A. Generally, this is done over a layer two fabric or something similar in an IX. But using a route server can be quite useful in some enterprise deployment or even data center fabric deployment situations. So that is pretty much it for BGP Next Top and basic BGP operation. In the next section, I'll be talking about some odds and ends, things you don't think about with BGP that will help you understand BGP a lot better. <laughs>